Anyway. Well, uh, hey, I, after you've been talking about this project for years, and I'm so glad that we are able to take the time right now uh, to do this, to get a, the first chunk of it done, because uh, I think it's a great... A great project and uh, it'll be a wonderful legacy um, and yeah so um, for the purposes of syncing the audio later I have to do a countdown and then we'll begin so um, okay so five four three two All right, uh, we are here in the home of Bob Watts. Uh, I'm Sam Segrist, uh, his oldest grandson, and we are here uh, to begin the 20 Heroes Project. So, um, yeah, Grandpa, do you want to talk a little bit about what your idea behind this project is? <clears throat> well, just that <clears throat> I was uh, musing one day about... Uh, heroes and uh, there was maybe some program on the air and I thought well what are my heroes and so then I started to think about it and then I thought well I guess uh, we most of us could have about 20 heroes and uh, so I started compiling a list and I came up with uh, you know, some what I think probably three that would be everybody's hero and then the other 17 people would have different uh, heroes for, for but I came up with uh, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and uh, and uh, Thomas Jefferson and so those were those happened to be three and uh, and then I went on from there and uh, uh, so then it became more than just the heroes but uh, those that that was my start and I thought well this would be a nice to to uh, chronicle these and and some reasons why and then then uh, my grandkids could look at it and uh, and say well this is what this is what my granddad was thinking and uh, uh, may not agree always but anyway this is what this is how he this was his take on life and who who the important uh, uh, movers and shakers in our history and society were. So there, that's where I, that's where I started. All right. Well, let's uh, get started. Um, hero number one um, is President George Washington. Well, he was a person, uh, a, a person of privilege, and uh, but he also uh, uh, has a great faith in. Uh, and, and a, a goal, a mission, I guess, and uh, uh, he he thought about the opportunities for this country and uh, and put his life on the line to uh, to achieve it. And all of his uh, personal uh, uh, influence and and body strength to uh, to make it happen. And uh, and then uh, having won the. Won the war and uh, and through uh, sometimes luck, sometimes just sheer determination uh, and and great leadership. Uh, then beyond that, he went on to be uh, a uh, very respectable president. And then one of the greatest things he did was he served two terms and stepped down. And he did not, and thereby. Um, when people were, some people were clamoring for a, for a monarchy, why, or a kingship, or whatever, uh, royalty, uh, he nipped that in the bud and 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 uh, sort of guaranteed a elected um, presidency. So uh, he was he was great all the way around in that regard. Yeah. So he uh, established a great presidency or a precedent in the presidency and understanding that um, there's an allotted time to make your mark but that to prevent um, you know decades long rule and corruption that there's a time to exit the stage gracefully yes and so with it being an election year right now I think we're 
we're seeing uh, how our current president is trying to engineer that. Um, uh, yeah, that that's great. Um, There's it, another little wrinkle there that yeah. uh, that d did not occur at the time that to me when I was first chose Washington, but uh, but one of my ancestors, a fellow named Watts. Uh, was the son of a man that came from England, <clears throat> and he served in Washington's uh, uh, regiment or military there, and uh, um, and he lived uh, also lived seven miles from from Thomas Jefferson's father. So uh, there's some family history there as well, and and I think that that goes back about eight. I, I'm not for sure at this point, but about eight or more generations of, uh, from me, of, of uh, preceding generations of Watts's that, mm -hmm. that served under, under George Washington. So uh, I guess that was another little uh, uh, bonus to, uh, to choosing Washington. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, hero number two is President Abraham Lincoln. Well, um, I think first, first and foremost, I think he he saved the Union, and and then second, he uh, issued the Emancipation Proclamation, and uh, and sad to say that uh, he was assassinated, which sort of guaranteed him immortality on the one hand, but on the other hand, um, allowed things to deteriorate and the transition um, after the war uh, or the war between the states however you want to want to say it uh, wasn't able to proceed like like he probably had envisioned and um, so but that was uh, certainly those two things were were uh, extremely important and the another thing, I believe he established the land grant colleges. Uh, so uh, Iowa State, I think, being the first, uh, the first one of those, I believe. Um, and uh, and so being an Aggie, why well, I'm I'm very grateful for the land grant colleges. And uh, uh, so you can chalk that up to to Lincoln. And I think he was also involved in the. Maybe the Transcontinental Railroad, uh, the the legislation to uh, promote that. So <clears throat> those were some great uh, great moves for his uh, his time. But but uh, of course all dwarfed by saving the Union and the and the, and and the Emancipation Proclamation. Yeah, you know um, I'm looking at this list of heroes and I I realize. Um, one thing that they all have in common, and uh, our our viewers will be seeing this as uh, as we go through the project, is that you have chosen heroes who um, have greatly affected the course of history, and thus the lives of pretty much everyone today. Um, so, yeah, I. I think that's pretty neat. Um, did you see the movie Lincoln? Spielberg's Lincoln? No. no oh. I didn't. Well, I'll have to rent it and watch it. I think you'd really enjoy Daniel Day Lewis's portrayal. Um, so. I saw several excerpts and, uh, you know, Charlie Rose interviews and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so uh, uh, I was, uh, yeah, I, I, I know it would have been a, it was a great movie. So. Well, we'll we'll watch it uh, the next time we get together. Okay. And then if uh, we want to add anything to this segment, we can. Okay. So, all right. Uh, we are now uh, to hero number three, Thomas Jefferson. Well, I think the uh, <clears throat> the greatest uh, uh, thing about Jefferson, uh, well, two great things. Uh, of course, number one was the Louisiana Purchase. And uh, number number two, then of course, was the Lewis and Clark expedition, so uh, which he he commissioned. And uh, but the 
when you think about the Louisiana Purchase, he um, he more than doubled the size of the United States with one with one uh, uh, act, and uh, which also influenced uh, myself because uh, my then ancestors from surname ancestors Watts came from Virginia uh, to uh, Eastern Missouri in 1820 and settled there in Lincoln County. But that that and that they w couldn't have done or wouldn't have done that without that being part of the Louisiana Purchase and the uh, that had previously been owned by Spain and then then it was acquired by France and then by the United States and so the uh, the land uh, at in that area in eastern Missouri was laid out in uh, uh, Arpens. I think it, it may have, could be maybe spelled more than one way, but I spell it A R P E N S, and Arpen was a European measure of of land and equal about eighty five hundredths of an acre. So, one of my ancestors bought. Uh, uh, 200 arpens, which would equal 170 acres, and of course at that time when they surveyed it and laid it out, it was from one white oak tree to a clump of three trees over to a big rock back to a creek or something like that. That's how they how they laid out that, that tract of land. That was near uh, Ellsbury, Missouri. In fact, uh, my first ancestor's brother bought a farm and he was a bachelor, and then he died and gave gave the farm to my to his brother, my ancestor, who then sold it to a man named Ellsbury, and uh, that town is now named Ellsbury. So that tract of land is now the town of Ellsbury. But that's just a little aside to the to uh, the fact that the Louisiana Purchase was uh, they were there because of the United States uh, acquiring that that land. So, uh, but that and the uh, Lewis and Clark expedition was certainly, uh, it, well, it compares today to going to the moon. So, uh, certainly uh, uh, nothing, and trying to not take anything away from Lewis and Clark either. Mm -hmm. They were, they were. Or Sacagawea. Well, Sacagawea. Yeah. And uh, um, even, even, uh, Charbonneau, like uh, like uh, Judas Iscariot, they they played a role in in some of the big big uh, events of our history. So, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but anyway, Thomas Jefferson certainly was was a giant in terms of shaping the the uh, the future of the United States. And of course, I think that trip to the West Coast then uh, then that in turn. Uh, Created some additional uh, f philosophical things like the manifest destiny, and mm -hmm. the people had to keep forging until they, they 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 couldn't rest until they hit the uh, hit the Pacific Ocean, and so there was. And then they found out about Hawaii. <laughs> yes, the Sandwich Islands. So yeah, and then Mark Twain opened that up. So. Well, what about Thomas Jefferson's involvement with the Declaration of Independence um, strikes you as particularly heroic or inspirational? Well, I think he uh, helped uh, certainly helped to write it and uh, and, and shepherded it and and uh, uh, and cajoled his uh, his uh, uh, his peers into uh, getting on board and and. Uh, Without without that, there wouldn't have been the uh, uh, those people that signed on to that. That was they were they were basically committing their 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 lives and their fortunes to that uh, to that effort, and uh, that was that was really commitment. That wasn't just being involved. That was truly a commitment. Mm -hmm. So uh, a real band of brothers, if you want to. You draw that analogy so okay now uh, we're going to move forward in time to hero number four uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, what about Roosevelt is uh, particularly 
inspiring or heroic for you? Well, the nation had uh, just experienced a terrible depression and a meltdown of the economy. And of course, uh, uh, naturally history blames the incumbent, Herbert Hoover, um, and uh, who was really a good man, but I don't think he, he, he didn't sense the, uh, some of the, the needs of the, of the times and uh, felt that things would uh, be self-correcting and, and they weren't. And of course, the world, uh, we forget sometimes that we're not, we're not the whole universe. We're, we're just part of the overall world. And, and uh, when the world was tanking at the same time, why well, then it impacted uh, our economy and, uh, and just, uh, just exacerbated uh, things. And, uh, but Roosevelt came in and, and by his uh, effective oratory and positive talks, he, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, being able to be strategic in his manipulation of, of uh, Congress and other people, he was able to get things done that, that did help people and, and whether they were much better off or not, but they, they thought they were. And they thought that at least the people, they thought, the people thought that the president really cared about every, every day, Jane and, and John, and, and, uh, and, and, and did institute programs that, that started uh, putting uh, money into the economy and creating jobs. And uh, locally there at Troy, we had a, uh, we developed a new uh, Quiver River State Park and 5,000 acres that the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps, came in and they they brought in young men that uh, um, and paid them uh, I forget what they paid them thirty dollars a month or something and which most of that money they sent home to their families. Well, that that generated cash money and uh, and it gave them jobs and they gave them job skills and they did they did uh, civil projects they built they built bridges and parks and planted trees and and uh, did all kinds of uh, positive things in fact lasting things you can see right to this day and that's been uh, all these years later and uh, um, but th things like that the between the civilian conservation corps and the work projects administration and and other things uh, uh, got got people going. Uh, some money was sure wasted and squandered, but when you get kicked money in the economy and you put a shovel in a guy's hand and pay him money, why then uh, he spends it, mm -hmm. and and it and it and it helps. Uh, it and and he also makes people feel good. Feels like that they're they have uh, there's there's honor in work and. Uh, and so when you create a job for a person, they get to work and earn money, they, they feel good about themselves. And then of course, <coughs> the, the storm clouds were emerging on the, on the, uh, on, in Europe. And uh, so there were a couple, couple, three things that Roosevelt did that were, uh, I'm sure he, some people didn't like, but one of which he was he was building a shadow air force in Canada. They were up there training under the Canadian Air Force. One guy was from my hometown, uh, Colonel, uh, uh, well, I guess I knew him when he was a major, uh, A.F. Tony Story. And <coughs> he would, he had learned to fly in, up in Canada as a Canadian Air Force. Well, as soon as World War II started, he walked back across the border and changed uniforms, and he was in the U.S. Air Force. Mm -hmm. So that gave us some trained pilots that we wouldn't otherwise have had. Uh, then he also uh, was instituted a peacetime draft. Well, uh, he certainly, the mothers of America didn't like him for that, but uh, it, it gave us a head start getting ready to, for... Mm -hmm. World War II, uh, 
and uh, and then then uh, third thing he did he uh, he instituted a lend lease program uh, which uh, gave ships and war material and and uh, uh, and food and stuffs to to Great Britain or they would have been speaking German or uh, because Hitler was, oh no mein Gott <laughs> German. Yeah, they, they were they the were, Germans. So um, Hitler was wanting to, you know, take over Germany and would have easily mm -hmm. uh, without uh, without uh, that assistance in lend lease. So, um, and I think the main thing Roosevelt uh, in his fireside chats and other things, and of course he's he's been castigated. Well, and he instituted. Uh, um, the ever normal granary had Henry Wallace in there as a, uh, Secretary of Agriculture, and they and um, and <clears throat> helped farmers uh, from going broke, and uh, and and uh, did a lot of projects that that helped people, helped the everyday, and a lot of times it was it wasn't always the help that was given, but it was the the feeling that they cared and they were trying, and so. When when people think that you're trying to help them, you then you then you're more inclined to also help yourself. So um, it, that that was uh, some of his biggest. Uh, uh, he was a good salesman, and mm -hmm. uh, and so he, uh, he did a great job there. And of course, uh, you know he did he did there there were like all. All leaders. There's times when he probably erred, and he probably got taken in by Stalin and some other things. But uh, um, you know, maybe he'd, he'd stayed in office too long. But uh, then, then of course, when he died, why? Uh, then uh, Truman came in, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's interesting. My grandparents had when. Uh, Roosevelt was elected in '32. They had gotten this new little uh, fox terrier, female pup, and hadn't named it yet. And they were waiting on the election to name it Rosie or Hoovy. Oh. Uh -huh. And so they ended up naming it Rosie. Well, that was '32, and I was born in '35, and so Rosie was always around me growing up. And I remember the day that Roosevelt died. We were planting uh, 4,000 stalks of celery, uh, and because uh, my grandparents were truck farmers, and the uh, and the news came on that Roosevelt had died, and and Rosie was still alive. The dog was still alive when Roosevelt died. So uh, uh, I've got some pictures of me and Rosie, and oh, I'd like my, to see my those. granddad's old uh, Model A truck, Ford truck. So, but. Uh, uh, so Roosevelt was, I grew up with Roosevelt, so to speak, and uh, uh, and then uh, then Truman came aboard. So, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves uh, because um, yeah, uh, Truman is hero number six. But be um, before we take a short break, I believe hero number five is. Um, the first female hero on your list, and closely related to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and that is Eleanor Roosevelt. So, hero number five, Eleanor Roosevelt. Well, Eleanor was um, was quite a lady. Uh, she uh, she she was probably uh, a very she was very assertive, very proactive, and and uh, and I I know was a great uh, uh, <clears throat> was a great uh, uh, supporter of FDR, and I think they probably end up with maybe didn't have a lot of uh, love in her life, but I think always had a lot of respect, and uh, of course she, maybe she always loved him, but I uh, there was they were they were human, but. Uh, Nevertheless, she she rose to the calling of being the respected first lady, and was uh, got out and and worked with 
with the uh, uh, Red Cross, worked with the troops, um, and, uh, <clears throat> and was a great role model all through World War II and, and plugged along tirelessly. And, and I can remember her uh, doing all those things, <clears throat> traveled widely, and then, then uh, long after he had died, she was, uh, I, I think it was to the <clears throat> United Nations, uh, uh, which kind of replaced the old League of Nations after World War II. Mm -hmm. The League of Nations had kind of been a flop and didn't seem to have been as effective as it should have been. But anyway, the <clears throat> the United Nations, I guess that's where she she uh, worked with other countries and drafting, I guess you'd call it a, a human bill of rights. And she was uh, uh, tirelessly battled to get in into that human bill of rights and get all these nations to sign off on it, um, much to a lot of their dislike. But nevertheless, she she hammered it out and uh, and stood up against uh, anybody that got in her way and and uh, and set the tone for for not just women's rights but human rights uh, uh, in all parts of the world in every country. Now, to say that's all been honored, uh, no, that's human nature. But, but nevertheless, it's 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 codified, and uh, and thanks to her tireless efforts, and if she didn't do anything else in life, that was that was uh, very uh, significant. So, uh, basically, she 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 soldiered on, was a good wife, and uh, and and certainly was a a credit to uh, uh, to this to uh, uh, her her uh, career as a president's wife and to her own own life as a, as a as a very positive individual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, um, those are our, our first five heroes. Um, uh, we're going to take a break and then we'll resume in uh, just a little bit. So thank you for watching.